You've worked hard to accumulate wealth, but with these uncertain times, how can you preserve and grow your wealth in a safer place? Offshore, while earning regular quarterly dividends in US dollars. The solution is here. Hundreds of investors from across South Africa are investing in specialized medical real estate in the USA, sourced by a highly skilled team who make it easy for you. Orbvest SA, an authorized FSP. Visit orbvest.com. Chilling now with uh, Vickers Furstenbach, he's head interest rate process at Future Growth. Vickers, appreciate your time. Uh, a, a note that came out from Future Growth uh, with yourself and colleagues uh, just last week. Uh, we really saw wild action in the, the U.S. 10-year uh, treasuries in, in February, March. I mean, typically, you know, treasuries are, are not disrespect, but they're slow and stodgy. Um, and, and it was really a little bit crazy. I mean, largely worries about inflation, uh, positive economic outlook, uh, and, 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 and some fear really significant moves happening. Good morning, Simon. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, when you look at our own sort of fair value estimates, um, we're always stuck to sort of levels around 2% for the U.S. 10-year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, until recently, before the sell-off, it went as low as half a percent. Um, <laughs> and now, you know, it's like one of those things. You know, we all know um, something needs to give. Um we're all waiting for that something. And then, you know, there's one or two big players that starts sort of like, you know, it serves as a catalyst or almost for a move and then suddenly sort of like the wall breaks. And I think that's typically sort of like one of those things, what we would call a mini uh, taper tantrum. Mm-hmm. Um, you've probably heard of that in the way back in 2000. When was it 2013 when uh, Ben Anke sort of you know, indicated that they're going to sort of start sort of normalizing policy in the United States. Then that sort of led to a, a global surge in yields. Um, and we've seen some of that in the U.S. and elsewhere as well. Obviously, it sort of filtered through to South Africa. Um, so in a way, you know, it's not a surprise. The timing tends to sort of be a surprise. But I think the uh, local market, in a way, probably overreacted a bit, especially at the front end, uh, because... Yes, we all know um, inflation in the United States elsewhere mm. and, and in South Africa the next uh, two months or so is going to spike. Uh, in SA, two months' time in the U.S., you know, we're going to see data today. Uh, but it's because of the low base that was created last year, by right? that that uh, collapse in yeah. all prices and obviously a few other things as well. So in a way, the market knows it, but the market also doesn't know it. And then... You know, the market tends to reposition and it happens in sort of a flash. And I think that's, that's typically what I yeah. think that was happened in, in quarter one as well. And I take your point. I mean, it, it was a bit of a tension trend from it. It was quite something, it was, it was a bit of a spectacular to, to watch. I mean, you, you mentioned that inflation. I mean, as you say, it's a low base, uh, particularly the fuel price. I mean, you know, Brent was what, well, you know, in the teens. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, West Texas for a moment there we, went negative. We, we kind of yeah. know it's coming. And it's not it's not structural inflation in a sense. It really is just, no. it, it, it's fuel. It, it, we can see it. It shouldn't be surprising or spooking the market. You see, that's the thing, and, and that's what central banks are trying to sort of do. I mean, um, Powell and 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 Key, they they try their best to sort of like to, you know just sort of keep the market in, in in the loop in terms of this is the way we look at things. Yes, we can also get it wrong. I mm-hmm. mean, should never sort of forget the fact that they also sort of working on forecasts. And we know that the United States wants to sort of have inflation higher or closer to, to the 2% level. For instance, today, we should focus on core inflation. Today, yeah. headline CPI in the United States is going to spike to, say, 25 But core is going to hover somewhere around 1, 1.5. And, and I think that's what we need to focus on. And locally, um, the governor of the South African Reserve Bank also made it very clear that, guys, we all expect this. Uh, we all expect the year-on-year rate you know, to go as high as four and a half or so. Uh, but what we tend to do is we focus on post this adjustment, uh, in a way, normalization of the rate. And do we expect SA inflation to, to hit to the battle days where we saw it at five, six percent? And at this point, Simon, we do not expect that. We expect inflation to hover somewhere between uh, four, four and a half post the you know the jump that we that you're gonna see with I think the main number. Yeah and, 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 and I think that's the focus. You know, that should be the focus is that how much of that is is like 
it's, it's a relative price change um, mm-hmm. and its base effect and how much of that will lead to proper ugly inflation, how much of that pass-through will take place to the end consumer. Yeah, and at four, four and a half, that that smack bang in the Reserve Bank's target range, which then brings the point, a local market seems to be pricing in, I don't know, fairly aggressive rate increases later in the year. I, I, I I'm, you know, the, the, the data that you're suggesting, if inflation's in the middle of that zone, I'm not sure we get rate increases necessarily this year at all. No, I, I tend to agree. I think the the forward rate agreement market, the the, uh, the market you refer to, um, mm. is certainly very aggressive, uh, but that market tends to also reflect tantrums. Um, <laughs> um, it sees direction and then it starts pricing it and then it overreacts and we disagree with the extent of the policy tightening that that market, that forward market, is pricing at the moment. Um, and, and that, you know, and, and obviously we will take positions against that as well if we, if we feel strongly about that. I just think that it's overly it's overly aggressive, um, um, and I think in a way, you know, we yes, we're going to see uh, growth picking up significantly, even if you sort of go to a very bullish number of five percent for this year. Mm. I mean, remember last year we we're still down seven yeah. percent, um, yeah. and you know, there's like, and if, if inflation isn't isn't that much of an issue, so the central bank has got scope to sort of like just you know. Keep the foot off the pedal for now. Um, why, why be aggressive if inflation is not going? Underlying inflation is not going to be the big issue. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a key point here. It's that underlying. It's that core inflation. Focus on that number. Vickers uh, first and back head interest rate process future growth. Appreciate your early morning. The show is brought to you by Orbvest's latest investment opportunity, Medical 32, a multi-tenanted Class A medical office building located in Jacksonville, Florida. For more information, visit Orbvest.com. Orbvest SA is an authorized financial services provider, license number 50483.